Hi, Dr. Richard J. Sands here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a PowerPoint that aligns with uh, APA guidelines. You know, in the APA manual, it doesn't actually give guidance on um, formatting a PowerPoint presentation um, with uh, uh, APA alignment. So what I'm going to show you is how to create a PowerPoint that has alignment with APA formatting like you would on a research paper. All right, so let's let's get her going. So, you know, with, uh, with your, just click here. In creating a PowerPoint, um, you want to use a backdrop that has some sort of you know, color to it, a little, little something. Um, that's the, the fun about using you know, creating a PowerPoint presentation instead of a Word document, you get that little color to it, right? But at the same time, you don't want the uh, PowerPoint presentation, the backdrop and all that to overshadow your content uh, where people are paying more attention to, you know, the pictures you have or animation that actually draws from the presentation. So um, don't want to, uh, don't want to uh, get uh, caught in that trap either. So for this uh, exercise, I just am um, using a pretty simple PowerPoint uh, presentation, uh, PowerPoint template. I think it's uh, crayons or something like that. And as you know, uh, these days you can get so many templates, templates from different sites. And even um, here in the design section, you can pick a uh, template. One of the things on here you may want to stay clear of, which I think, you know, some of these backdrops right here with all those moving pieces and and uh, some of this really uh, funky backgrounds, I'd stay clear of those because it's uh, it's distracting. And um, so when you're doing something for academia or especially in the workplace, you don't want, like I said, your backdrop to distract. All right. So I'm just using the. Uh, the crayon PowerPoint template, and it's pretty, uh, just pretty basic, but it gives a little color. All right, so let's get into it. Um, on APA, uh, in the manual, it talks about like the title page, and it only says uh, uh, a few elements um, as a requirement. It also states for per your professor's uh, requirements. Okay, um, and in my uh, teaching over the past 15 years or so i've always required a little a little bit more than the basics so let's go ahead and see what that looks like so on the title page you always want to start off start off with your assignment name so that'll be at the top and then from there what you want to have is uh your student or team names so obviously, if you're just doing it for yourself, um, then you would just put your name. If you're in a team, like, uh, or if you have a team name, uh, you can say team name, or if you know individual team uh, members. I always require just individual team members because when I'm grading, it just makes it easier. So I'd say, uh, you know, again, it's individual. For your name, it's a team. Just list out each each everybody's name, and then below that, school name. Uh, course number and then uh, professor name looks like I got this on double space professor name. and due date okay so on on the date you know you want to put the date that is due not the date that you're uh, creating it uh, so just be mindful of that. let me change this uh, oh yeah it has all types of spacing going on here let's just bring that down to zero and let's just move it down here so there you go so you know something like that right okay so then uh, that's what it would look like just uh you know what what the elements would be so what what would that look like um in reality so the assignment name could be something like management uh, and staffing strategies And as far as the font, you know, it's uh, kind of up to you and what you want to use. I always like uh, Calibri. Um, it's a really efficient font. So that's uh, that's my favorite font. But, 
you do have some leeway there. What you do want to do, though, is make sure on your font it's the same throughout your presentation. Maybe on the title page if you want to do something a little different, but um, you want to be consistent. I've uh, I've seen, I've reviewed so many PowerPoint presentations um, that they have different font, way different sizes and everything. It's just it's distracting. It doesn't, doesn't help any. So pick a font, stick with it. I like Libre. Uh, okay, so then let's put in the let's what's going to be uh, John student. Uh, and obviously, um, I am making some names up here and stuff. And the school name is University of the New And then course number, <clears throat> oh, sorry, uh, this should be uh, course name right here, then course number. So it's course name. So that would be next. You just give us some room here to work. So course name, and the course name would be um, healthcare management studies okay and then course number hcs 101 again you know i'm i'm just making these up um would be of course you know your school and your assignment and everything and then um professor And that new date, we'll just make up a date in the future. Okay, so that's what uh, your your final title page would look like. Um, be sure uh, that you get your professor's name exactly like uh, he or she likes to have the name uh, on the papers. Um, and, you know, it's for consistency as well. For myself, that's how I like uh, my name. I require my name to be spelled out, and that's what I ask my students to do on uh, any assignments. That's that's what I request. And so for your professor, make sure you just ask uh, how they would like their name with their title and um, and go from there. So that's what your title page would look, uh, look well, something like that. And can move this down a little bit. And so you can see it's nice and clean. You have your assignment name. Your name or your, you know, your name or team names individually, university name, and then course name, uh, course number, professor, and uh, the due date. All right, so that's your title page, something like that. Let's go ahead and what you always want to have next is uh, a table of content, okay? Um, and the reason being is, you know, you want... Um, to give your audience, uh, you know, a heads up as to what um, what the assignment is going to be, uh, what, what are the individual aspects of, of the assignment. So you always want to give them, uh, you always want to have a table of contents. So that's what we're going to create now. All right, now that we have the title slide complete, let's go ahead and uh, add a new slide here. And what we want to do is create a table of contents because all, all PowerPoint presentations, unless you know, required to the contrary, should have a table of contents to let your uh, viewers know what, uh, your audience know what you're going to uh, present. Also, it's a good thing to have, always uh, you know, have a slide number. The reason is if uh, you're presenting to somebody or a group of people or whatever, uh, it's always good to um, have that so if there's any questions they could say you know back on slide three something like that plus um, you know with the APA guidelines for research papers of course you have to have um, page numbers um, you know some optional things as well uh, down here at the bottom you know to have uh, the the name of the um, uh, name of the assignment um, down here at the bottom and then you know the due date that's uh, those those are optional um 
I think they're good to have um, for consistency. Definitely the page number is required. Okay, so as far as the uh, table of contents, um, pretty simple. Just uh, you're gonna have you're gonna have your introduction. Always have an introduction, and then ultimately you're gonna have your body, um, your assignment body. Oops. And then uh, that could be, you know, however number of uh, slides your assignment body will take, uh, whatever the assignment requires. And then you're going to have your conclusion. Uh, and then you're going to have your references. And then you're going to have any um, attachments or um, appendix. So that, that's going to be, that will be the breadth of your um, presentation. Now, again, your assignment body is where you're going to have a number of pages uh, relevant to your assignment. Okay. So let's go ahead and continue. New slide. Now for your introduction. It can be your introduction and conclusion will be a little different than the, your body. So for example, on your um, introduction and conclusion, those will both be a, a paragraph, um, like a written down paragraph, just like your research paper. And um, the rest of your the body assignment body is going to be about five bullet points, and then you're going to have your speaker notes as well. Now remember, the bullet points just serve as a backdrop to what you're talking about right so it's not like you're reading a script it's you're talking you're narrating the story because really with powerpoint presentations uh or you know any presentations if it's not powerpoint but another software um you're telling the story and so you don't want to be reading your your story from a script okay so introduction um like i said will be a paragraph just uh, move those over a little bit. And so that, and, and remember with your introduction, it is uh, one paragraph. Uh, so a paragraph is uh, three to five sentences. So that is what's, uh, what you want it to be. Let me see if I got something over here I can bring over. I don't need the bullets. Something like that. Now you don't want to have a bold, um, looks like my font was set to bold. That's okay. And there you have it. It is something just like that. So there's your introduction. And again, um, one paragraph, three to five sentences. Okay. All right. So let's continue on. So we have our introduction now let's go to assignment body and what that may look like so let's go ahead and add a new slide so um let's for our assignment um let's go back up here because we want to make it relative so the assignment body for this uh fictitious assignment is going to be basic functions of managing and then let's see here um, we will have managing looks like I may have to fix that spacing too but managing the staffing shortage and We'll just have those two uh we'll just have those two function you know main body areas for the for this uh example all right so we have our introduction right there introduction and let's see here so we're going to go into the first body part and it's going to be basic functions of managing go down here and that's going to go up here in your title basic functions of managing and then what are the um, what are the basic functions of managing what what are what are your bullet points 
going to be. So let's see, I think I got some mocked up over here. So it'll be traditional management. Like that. Planning. Organizing. And it could be a uh, dispute resolution. And let's just say we have four, and that's that's fine too. You want your max you want to have is uh, uh, five because uh, then you just want to add. So, like for basic functions of managing, if it's such a long section where you have really you need like more than five bullets, then you just put a, another page and say basic functions managing continued. Um, you don't cram everything on one page because that's a good thing with you know PowerPoint presentation slides is you can just make another one. It's not a big deal. All right, so let's just uh, make up another one here as far as um, uh, and then managing through crises. Okay. So that would be the uh, five main bullet points uh, that um, support the basic functions of managing. Now, when you are creating your body slides, you're also gonna wanna have um, your references. So again, a little different than, um, you know, with a um, research paper, because as you write, you put in your references as your in-text citation. So like in-text citation for a slide, you would have down, you, you would just put down here somewhere uh, on your paper, on your slide. And then when you do your reference, reference uh, slide, um, it'll be a little different than APA formatting for research papers because, as you know, research papers require APA formatting uh, in regards to the references to an alphabetical order. Uh, on a PowerPoint presentation, you want to do your references in order of appearance on your as you go through your presentation. And then, um, and I'll show you in a minute what that looks like, then you'll number them ultimately instead of, uh, so it's a little different. So this one is going to be one. Um, uh, let's say uh, and then I won't I won't type it all out right now because I'll show you at the uh, we get the references. So you just have that, you know, here, and you want to make that uh, smaller, of course. And you also be mindful, like when you insert a uh, text, depending on like what your template is and stuff, you know, it may want to submit it in a different font than what you're using for your presentation. Like I said, I like to use Calibre um, and uh, when I went to insert it, I wanted to insert it as Tahoma. So just, uh, again, something to be cognizant of. And so, you know, if you have just one reference for this title, for this slide here, fine. If you have two, then, you know, maybe, uh, well, then not maybe, but if you have two or more, which you should, probably won't, There we go. And then, you know, I won't, put, um, uh, I won't take time to type the whole thing there. So that's what you do. And then that's, that's what it looks like. So, you know, ultimately you would continue that on. So uh, your next one would be managing the staffing shortage. Okay. And so go ahead and put in another slide and you'll do managing the staffing shortage like that. Now what I like to do is when I when I like copy and paste, so I'll paste I'll copy from here, right? And that's for format a specific way. Um, and so if you don't want to carry that formatting on, then what what I always do, and you if you don't know that, is just go up and you want to say keep text only. So 
because you know when you copy and paste you paste the format as well so when you have something already formatted you just want to copy the text over then you paste just for the text only um i think with i don't think it works with microsoft but with google you can do control shift v versus just control v for paste control shift hold that down hit v then that just pastes the text only and does not paste the formatting all right so we are going to put in some bullets here for um, managing the staff shortage. I think I have a few things to put in here. Actually looking at one of the uh, assignments my student did just to, for some topics and content here. So healthcare industry, that, and then uh, clinical errors. See what else? Okay, we got uh, ethical issues. Um, let's see here. We're going to say um, impact from uh, technology or tech, uh, this way, tech. impact and then uh last one can be um let's see here well maybe just have four for this one that's okay too Pulse I uh, as long as you get the the point here of what that looks like and you know um make sure things close evenly and you're going to have your references now for here you may not you may not use the same ones before right but i'm just gonna um Keep that formatting, and I'm going to say, let's see, start numbering from three on this one because we're using, we're not using the same references for this next slide. We're actually using uh, another one, Medicare uh, report 2022. And let's say this one is um, Kaiser Foundation Health Plan uh, 2021 report. And of course, the dot, dot, dots are, you know, the rest of what the uh, reference uh, would look like. Yeah, it's not going to type a lot out. And all right, there you have it. So. And, you know, you'd continue on, right? So that's basically, you know, what um, cleanly, um, and if you wanted to put in, say, like uh, uh, an image over here. That kind of wraps up, like, uh, with the content slide. You know, look, that, that kind uh, of added well. just uh, an image there. It's all image there. And even back up on the table of contents. Just, uh, like I said, you could put some images in there that <clears throat> don't distract, but uh, kind of just add a little something to it. Um, so now that uh, we finished just our two content slides, of course, your presentation will have as many content slides as needed, but these are two for examples. Uh, we need to go ahead and put our conclusion and our references. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click, duplicate the introduction. Let's drag it down and retype this to conclusion. have my conclusion written over here in a Word document and copy and then paste that over here. I'll use control V well, that copied the wrong format but that's all right. We're going to use a paintbrush page down and we'll make it look the same. There we go. All right. So then that is our conclusion, which I had, like I said, uh, written in the Word document. That was the uh, written paper for it. And I went ahead and added the references. So <clears throat> like I said, references are a little different for presentation versus a research paper. 
first research paper, like I said earlier, you put them in alphabetical order. Uh, on a PowerPoint, uh, you want to put them in in order of appearance. Um, so the first one, second, third. Now, you may use like that first one there as an example at Cedar Sinai 2003. You may use it on your first, you know, on, on one of your first slides, and again later. You don't have to put it again like one and then seven or something like that. Just it's the first one you use, number one, two, three. You could, you know, if those are all your references, then you could use those interchangeably, you know, throughout your presentation. And then, you know, if you had any, um, if you had any um, uh, appendices, then go ahead and create a new slide, you know, over here, and it would door appendices. I don't have any for the example, but it is called appendix. And then you could put whatever, you know, whatever you wanted here. If you wanted to put in a document or uh, another graph, let's go ahead and uh, put a graph in. So this, uh, just a random graph is, uh, what is it called? The career management model. Again, these are just examples. Now, with a PowerPoint, you know, perhaps that's some, uh, something you would want to put on your um, content slide. Uh, so, you know, instead of uh, an appendix, you might you know, perhaps you would put it here. Something like that. I think, as, again, for an example, I, a lot of times you don't have appendices or appendix and, you know, a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, although, if you have a lot of detailed data um, that you don't want to go through, then you could put that in your appendix. Now, what's also important here as we look to wrap up are your speaker notes. So there's two ways you can get to your speaker notes. You can just lift that up like that, or you could go to uh, your your note master, and you can put them in right there. That's uh, kind of a lot of work, uh, so I like to put them in down here, and. For that, let's go ahead and go up to this page here, basic management functions, and let's just put in what we wanted to put for notes. So again, I copied that out of the Word document I had, and we can go ahead and paste them right there. There you go. So then that's a complete uh, slide with your, uh, you know, this one has uh, five bullets, got a little grayer image, got your references, your footer information, and your speaker notes. And that, that will do it as far as how to create a presentation, and of course I'm using PowerPoint, that aligns to uh, APA formatting got any questions you can uh, put them down in the um, down below and be happy to uh, answer them uh, make sure that you do uh, follow and hit that like button hit that like button all right thank you